Michael Ritchie. And I'm Cody May. And this is the Colorado Author Interview Circle. And today we are with Mario Acevedo. Mario, hello. From, he's a local celebrity writer in Colorado. So, um, so Mario, we're, we'll talk about the Felix Gomez Vampire Detective books. And then we'll talk about your, uh, the latest thing that, that's out is Good Money Gone, which is a Wolf of Wall Street type of story. But first, so the Nymphos of Rocky Flats. Yes. You worked at Rocky Flats. Yes. There were nymphomanios that nymphomaniacs. <laughs> nymphomanios. <laughs> nymphomanios. <laughs> no, they, they was. Um, is that male nymphomania? Anyway, just. Um, there was. Um, uh, I went to a uh, when they just when the place was closing down. I, they, they had a big uh, uh, party, and I, the book was about to come out, so I was handing out cards, and invariably the women would get this, and they were going, "The nymphos of Rocky Flats." Is this book about me? <laughs> so, and man, you said, of course, of course, <laughs> or it should be. We'll find out. We'll find yeah. out. Yeah. But chicken. <laughs> yes, probably chicken. <laughs> and so this is the so this is a story about an Iraq War veteran turned vampire turned private detective, and he and then the stories blend both a real world mystery with that has supernatural elements in it, and that's kind of the the premise of every uh, Felix Gomez book. And these are, um, and th there's five in the series so far. There's five in the series so far, yes. And then you're working on the sixth one Number now. Number six, that's the... And that's Rescue from Planet Pleasure. Yes. So Vampires and Aliens. Were you a little afraid of kind of cross genre, you know, kind of crossing that urban fantasy into sci-fi and into mystery? I don't really think of them as sci-fi. I think I'm just this urban, urban fantasy, fantasy satire. Not really satire on the genre, but satire on the whole, on the concepts that they have, because I've never really taken vampire stories very seriously. Oh, they're real. Know. Yeah, yeah, they're real. Yeah, 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 I know. I never, I never even movies, vampire movies, just couldn't get into them. But my protagonist is a vampire, so I have to embrace the uh, the concept, the legend, the legend. Who's your audience, Marco? I'm curious. Um, I, I, whoever. I mean, it's I've had. I was, had a signing one time at Barnes & Noble, and this girl came up, and she goes, I just turned 13, and my mom said I can buy your book. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had somebody else said that uh, her, uh, her grandmother had read one of my books and wanted, wanted it signed. And she was her like, grandmother? And she was 81 years old. Wow. And she, she, sent, she had uh, the nymphos and, uh, the sec and the sequel, X-rated Bloodsuckers. So she sent me the books and I signed them for her. <laughs> Traded blood smuckers. So. The sucker. And then the third one is? Uh, the Undead Kama Sutra. Um, and then fourth one is? <laughs> Jailbait Zombie. And the fifth one is Werewolf Smackdown. Correct. Jailbait Zombie. Mario Acevedo, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Now you were voted one of the, I mean, Barnes & Noble's did top 20 urban fantasy writers right. of the first decade. And your name was right up there. Yes, that was, that was cool. That was great. That's cool. <laughs> that was good. Did it boost sales? Always. I think so. I think so. Um, but you never know. They never tell you if it does yeah. or doesn't. Yeah. Well, it's a great. I loved it because it was that. I loved it because you kind of suddenly you have these aliens, and I don't want to give away too much. But I loved it. I loved your books. Okay, so that is the Impulse of Rocky Flats, Felix Gomez Detective, and then this is Good Money Gone, which you co-wrote with Robert Kilborn. Yeah, Richard Kilborn. Richard Kilborn. No yeah. relation to Robert. No. Okay. Uh, he um, is from Panama. He's an American, and now he lives in Panama. He's lived there for, for several years, and he was involved in a big Ponzi scheme, and in fact, the largest offshore Ponzi scheme in history. Really? And he really wanted to tell that story. But we couldn't tell it in nonfiction, because if you tell it in nonfiction, there's just a lot of information that we, did, that we didn't have mm -hmm. uh, available. And um, that would have been a larger project. So it's what we did is we fictionalized the story, but the more sensational aspects of the, sto of, the, of the story in the book are actually the true things. This is crazy, uh, what people go and what people do, and, and, uh, and when things start to go wrong in that. So it was, it was a lot of fun. And I got to interview a lot of the people in, that, that were involved in that. And when Richard and I were coming up with the premise of the story, there was still a lot of ambiguity, and I was coming up with things, and he goes, oh, that didn't happen, no, that's too over the top. And then we interviewed people, and it was even beyond oh. that, what really happened. 
Because I said, you know what would be kind of cool if your boss, because he got really paranoid, he was, he was bugging your phones, and he was putting spyware on, on your computers. And he goes, ah, oh, that didn't happen. Then we talked to the head of security, and he goes, yeah, that, that's oh, exactly really? what we did. <laughs> wow. And uh, we interviewed the, the head of security, who, because somebody in the company was starting to leak information to the press about the, the, the Ponzi scheme aspect of it. And uh, the... The, the CEO wanted to find out, so he hired this this uh, guy who uh, was an English uh, had an intelligence background, military intelligence background, and we were going to interview him. And I thought that this guy's not going to say anything, and he turned out to be the most most forthcoming of all. And he's but, a great character in the book. Yeah, yeah, I changed him. I made him a French, a uh, fr ex French uh, uh, foreign legion officer, and uh, but it was the same kind of character. And, and he was, you know, he was real devoted to his job, but at the same time, he knew exactly what's going on. And then he actually threw a lifeline to the, to the hero at the end of the story. So that was kind of, uh, uh, kind of interesting. Uh, it was a lot of fun to write. And, you know, like I said, I, 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 I like the book to, uh, you know, just, you know, get a bigger audience on that. It's just, just kind of hanging in there in Amazon. It's really not getting the kind of traction that I like, that I think the story deserves. It's a great read, especially with it has that, you know, Wolf of Wall Street is a big movie. Yeah. And it has that kind of high riches, high, you know, high riches, low moral yeah, decay. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Low moral decay? The moral decay. 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 Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what you're saying. <laughs> so you had a reader, though, who was like, I like parts of it, Mario, but I was a little shocked. By the moral decay. By the moral decay. Moral, yeah. And I thought that was the best part. <laughs> yeah. You want to shock you? Well, I like the whole, yeah, this charismatic kind of Tony Robbins right. type of, you know, character, yeah. character who's, you know, I've met them, right? They're these hard driving, charismatic, you, you would follow them. And then this guy does follow them, and, and it, it's a great, it's yeah, a great Things movie. start to, to crumble beneath their feet, and then you get stuck, and you can't just leave. He, well, uh -huh. the protagonist just couldn't leave the situation that he was in. Um, because he had a lot of money tied in, and he was trying to see it to the end, and finally, you know, he, he I, I think there's redemption through treachery, I think is... Redemption! The, you know, it's a tale it's of a redemption tale through, through treachery. treachery. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. So, do you, so, you want to ask a question? Yeah. Do you want to ask a question? I love learning about writing process. Okay. So, when you sit down to write these novels, whether it's a standalone, like Good Money Gone, or part of a series, how do you begin writing them? Do you, are you the kind of guy who plans it all, or do you just write organically, or how does that work? No, 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 hold on, hold on. What we really want to know is, do you write naked? No. What? I do. Pants I do, too. <laughs> Wind in my hair, typing down, especially, free, free as a bird. Especially when you co-write it. You, I mean, yeah, that's, no, I don't co-write naked. <laughs> no, 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 no. So your pants are plotter, what's kind of your process? In between. I'm not a, a hardcore uh, plotter like a, a Deaver. Jeffrey Deemer. <laughs> Jeffrey Deemer, he writes like a 60 to 100 page outline. C.J. Box does the same thing. Um, and I, I, if I start to do that, I think like 10 pages into it, I just get bored with the story because that's not fun to write. Yeah, sure. But you surprise I, yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and I like, uh, but I like that kind of structure and look at the major plot points. And then also think of, and I've learned, you got to think about what motivates the character. The characters, and, and weave that into the story and get direction. So then, as I start to write, then I actually, when I when I start to write the chapters, I say, okay, I now I know where the where the chapter's going, and I can kind of fill in the details. And then, um, about for me, maybe like a three-hour writing session and about fifteen hundred words is about when I hit that point right there, my brain just starts to, yeah, you know, like we all mired like yeah. mud and that. And I, and then I got I got friends on, on like on Facebook on Twitter, and they're like, oh. I did my 6,000 words today, and so I'm not going to take a break. Maybe I'll come back to it this afternoon. I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> hate you. I will hunt you down. Right. And you're, you're, you're a yeah. hunt peck. Yeah, like that. So I'm like, I, one time, a long time ago, I took that Mavis Beacon course, that software Mavis. course. I think oh, that's what it's yeah. called. Remember that? And I got up to like 18 words per minute. That, oh, was, no. that, was, that was smoking for me. You're like, yeah. And I, but, but I didn't like that because I, then I start thinking about having the type Instead of thinking about what I want to say, uh, sure. yeah. so then I say, screw it. Handwriting, man. That's why I handwrite it. You think uh, about you think about what you're about to write be while you're writing the previous. I, I think about the, the, the I have a uh, somebody was going to toss out this one of those old school electronic typewriters like from 1960, oh, yeah. and you turn it on and, and it's yeah. on. This and is the right. lights dim. 
And yeah, and, and it's like this thing is like commanding you, <laughs> right? You know, and you got to, and when you touch the buttons, you know, like, <laughs> so I can imagine somebody like uh, John D. McDonald or uh, Asshole oh, sure, sitting yeah. there on those. That's what they wrote those stories. Yeah, on. sure. But that to me would be just so intimidating because <laughs> you know you're right, and then that's stuck. You just can't unwrite that. You just have to write. Or you have the white out. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. This is With even, corrective tape. Oh, this is pre write out for oh, those yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. You know? And. Um, when I handwrite something, my problem is I get too impatient, and then I, I start to write real neat, and then by the end of the sentence, it's just yeah. a big and Well, and it takes, you know, twice as long. Yeah, it takes right. a long time. Yeah, it's like so it's a sacrifice for sure. Yeah. You're Mr. Quantity, I'm Mr. Quality. Yeah. No, don't be, don't be put me in a box, man. If you have quantity, you don't, don't have quantity. Death, the don't, quality. Don't, yeah. don't be put me in a box. Yeah, just sit through the quantity, and you'll get the quality. Yeah, so yeah. on the horizon yes. is the sixth book, six Felix Gomez. Correct. And then out now is Good Money Gone. Correct. And self-pub has... traditional publishing. Well, uh, uh, Rescue from Planet Player is going to be uh, self-pub. Okay. It's be independent pub. Independent, independent publishing. Just so right. No, because people are clamoring for more. Yeah, yeah, it's, sure. yeah it's it's. I get I get emails from, or face Facebook messages from somebody. They're like. Are uh, you done, you lazy ass? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hurry up! Man. For God's sake. That's the best insult you can get, though. Yeah, that is that from, is great from fans. So that's good. I feel I feel I feel lucky yeah, in that regard. Anything you want to add? Thank you very much for being here. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, and Mario Acevedo. Okay. But you count. Mario. Yes. All right, this has been, thank you very much, Mario Acevedo. You can find him online. You can find his books on Amazon and in your local bookstores. Uh, I'm Aaron Michael Ritchie. And I'm Cody May. And this has been the Colorado Author Interview Circle. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.